Hey, what's up, George? Hey, I'm doing well, and you? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Thanks for taking the time out today, man. Really, really appreciate it, buddy. So, won't keep you too long. Uh, where are you? At home? I'm home, yeah. I'm actually nice. moving in a, in a new home in, uh, on uh, next week, so I'm excited. Nice, nice. Exciting times. Still in uh, Montreal? Staying there? I, I'm in the suburb, like uh, outside of Montreal and more on the, on the countryside, on the south shore of Montreal. I'm a, I'm a country guy. I'm not, a, not, <laughs> not much of a city guy. Well, you got to get out there. Uh, I mean, that, that's what I want to do. I, I live just south of LA, but I want to get out there and like have some land and my wife wants to have chickens and stuff yeah. like that. Uh, yeah, good for you, man. Good for you. Right. Well, anyway, we're not here to talk about where you're going to be living. We're not here to talk about my wife's need for chickens. <laughs> George St. Pierre, the greatest welterweight of all time. Rush, the former 185-pound champion that choked me out unconscious. <laughs> Son of a gun. Uh, hey, you have a big announcement to make. You are returning to the competitive world of martial arts, correct? Yeah, not in the mixed martial art, though. Not in, um, in, uh, in, 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 uh, for the UFC in terms of uh, as a contender for trying to get back the title in mixed martial art. I'm going back into uh, grappling in the like submission wrestling jiu-jitsu circuit. Yeah, yeah, amazing. And that's going to be the UFC Fight Pass Invitational, right? That's right. Uh, they changed the date today. I, I, it will be uh, December 9th. And I got some name now that, that came out. And um, apparently most of the fans, uh, the UFC, they, they really want, uh, they, they would like me to grapple against uh, Nick Diaz. Uh, that's the name Ooh. that comes back the, the more often. Um, oh, Nick Diaz. That's amazing. You know, because I saw yeah. a lot of names online. And there yeah. was, I saw, I, I, I don't know where I saw this, but I'm sure I saw this yesterday. There was a rumor that it was going to be Habib. Was there any truth to that? No, I, I think it, it was just the, the fans that were excited about it because the fight never happened. Uh, but uh, no, I mean, I think he's retired, Khabib. And um, yeah, the, the name that they, the number one choice for UFC was uh, Nick Diaz. Because, you know, you, the UFC Fight Pass invitation, they know that I'm not, I'm no longer competing to tr try to be the best. You know, I'm, I, I, grappling, it's a very specialized sport. You know what we do, Michael? It's, it's mixed martial art. It's more, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more complete. It, there is less rules. You know, gra grappling is a more specialized sport. It doesn't mean if you're a, a, a great mixed martial art fighter that you will be a good grappler and vice versa. You know, so it's something that I, it's, it's new for me. I've competed before in the ADCC a long time ago, but this is truly something different. That it's a it's it's a different form of competition, different form of combat sports. So I will need the time to adapt. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. So, how did this come about? I mean, obviously, you know, anyone that follows you on social media, you're always in shape, you're always training, you treat your body like an athlete still. Um, so, you just did you miss that kind of competitive feeling? Uh, I miss. The adrenaline of competition, but I wouldn't, I would not go back and mix martial art. You know, I, yeah. the risks are 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 too big. Uh, you know, like, and I'm, I have no illusion. I'm I'm 42 years old. I probably I'm past my my physical prime. However, I I, I still like the, the the adrenaline of competition, and, and I think the best way to do it is in grappling. Uh, the the risks are uh, to a minimum in a way that you know, if something happens, you just tap. <laughs> and there's no brain damage because there's no strike. So it's it, I'm a very competitive person. I'm taking this very seriously, but I, 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 it's a, it's a fun competition. It's more fun. It's not as stressful as 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 it was when I was fighting. And you know when I was fighting, I wanted to be the, the strongest man in the world. That was my thing, my number number one priority. Now I have other more important priority. This is more for fun, for the kick of it, yeah. and for the the yeah. fans and. When the UFC told me they wanted to get into grappling, I wanted to help the platform UFC Fight Pass Invitational to 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 grow, and I wanted to be part of it. I, I I'm more there to serve the audience as a, a guy who will fight a novelty fight than a guy who will take that seriously and trying to compete to get to a world title. You know, I have no mm -hmm. illusion. You know what I mean? I'm I'm 42 years old. I'm doing this to 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 make something excited for for the audience for the fans 
So Nick Diaz, I mean, I think everyone's going to love that. I mean, who doesn't want to see that, right? Everyone wants to see that. And I think for Nick as well, because, you know, he's he's not a young guy these days either. I, I think it makes all the sense in the world. Have you had, you know, is that happening? Have you had word from Nick Diaz's side? I, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the UFC, the, with my agent talked to the UFC today. This is real fresh news. Breaking uh, they news. told me that Nick, Nick was interesting, apparently. But Nick is still under contract with the UFC. So we still have a, another fight apparently in his contract. So and and I, they, they would like him to come, to participate into the, the the grappling event to 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 make it big, you know, it's going to be host in a in a bigger uh, uh, place than usual. Oh, so it's, so it's going to be yeah. I'm going to be competing. There will be other big name in in the grappling world like Gordon Ryan probably, Giancarlo and, and some other guys. So it's never been a, a, a better time to be a jiu-jitsu uh, fans. Yeah, no, absolutely. So it's not going to be at the apex. They're going to do it somewhere bigger. I think that, that that's what I would. That was that what it was discussed with my agent. Yeah. Now I'm giving you some uh, some news <laughs> that like it's fresh. You know, that you're the first to to get it. it the Let's the go. date is changed. It has changed to December nine. It's a Saturday. And it will be also in a, in a bigger venue. So it, they, there will be an audience to, to watch the show. And, and that's what I wanted in the beginning because I don't all, only want it to be a thing that you can buy on a platform. I think it, it's important to have an audience and create a, mm. a, a, some kind of a, 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 an atmosphere. You know, like you fight, you fight in, in front of a crowd is different than when you grab all one-on-one in a gym, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I saw you there at the Apex last week. And you were talking with some of the guys and you were doing a, a little like, a little bit of promo for the event. And as we were talking, uh, one of the promoters or organizers was there and you guys are trying to get me to do it. Yeah, you know, I think, Michael, you should do it. You're still in good <laughs> shape. Why don't you come train with us in Austin, Texas? We should we should train together and maybe we'll, you'll be on the card with me competing December 9. You, maybe you could take on Anderson Silva or, you know, I, I would love to see, I would love to see it. And I think it would be a, a formidable opponent for you. I think it will be a great, great matchup that the, the fans will be pleased to, to watch, you know? Brother, so hold on. So you're saying that you will, because it would be my honor. It would be my absolute pleasure of a lifetime. So you're, you're saying that if I accept a grappling match, I can come and train with you guys. A hundred percent. I will be happy to, to train with you. The guys will be happy and, and I'm sure you will love the, the gym. Mm. The, my training partners, they're all very nice, you know. We train hard, but we're, we're not malicious, you know. It's fun. It's, it, it's like a brotherhood and I think it's the best place in the world to, for, for you to get ready if you go up against maybe, I, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. throwing out the name like Anderson Silva or, or you know, some, someone, uh, someone like I'll this. Do it. 100%. If, if we do December, I mean, I, I'm super busy with UFC stuff and a bunch of other stuff I've got going on, but December might work because I know initially you were going to do September, right? Or something like that. Yeah. And I didn't have time for that. But December, December, I could make, I think I could fit that into my diary. Michael, that would be perfect. It's right before Christmas. And, and uh, you know, the, all these uh, these holidays time that we're, where we can, you know, have a good time. So it's right before it. So, why don't you come compete with me on the same card and we train together and uh, after we, we celebrate the holidays and we're, we're in vacation. Yeah. I was going to say, I've got one condition. I will say yes right now. I will commit one condition that afterwards we go out and we do what we did in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> we, can't, don't know. we can't talk about what happened in Manchester. <laughs> what happened in Manchester <laughs> stayed in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> but we went out there. We had some drinks. But we, we got we we gotta do it in Vegas for sure. <laughs> All right. I'm in. I'm in 100%. All right. I look forward to it. So I'll, sp I'll reach out to the UFC and see what happens. Um, while I've got you, George, I've got a few things for you. Um, I went on Twitter and I asked people if they've got any questions for you. So I'll ask you those in a second. But what are you doing with yourself these days outside of, you know, outside of uh, grappling and coming back, obviously? Very much looking well, forward well, to Well, outside of the training, I'm, I'm very busy. I, I'm uh, more of an entrepreneur. I, I'm I'm very lucky, Michael. I'm doing very well. I don't need to compete to, to mm. in, in terms of money. I don't need to mm. ever work again. I, I just work because I like to keep myself busy, to challenge myself with yeah. different 
uh, different things. Uh, uh, you know, I have a food supplement company, uh, Warrior, that uh, I sell uh, uh, animal organs, beef oh, wow. uh, beef organs. Uh, it's doing very well. It's called Warrior. I have a, a own fitness company called Base Block Pro. Uh, it's fitness equipment that you, you know, we start, it, it explodes during COVID, you know, because people were mm -hmm. locked up. So it sells, the product sells very well. Uh, I have a vodka that just came out, uh, Percent. Oh. I, mean, uh, I have a betting online company, the Bet99. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty busy. Yeah, I have yeah. movies. I have a bunch of stuff going on. So uh, I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm a busy man. Life is good for George St. Pierre. I'm, I'm well done. Congrats on all that, by the way. What would you say? Because, George, you've always been a professional, right? You've always looked after yourself. You've always conducted yourself like a true professional. There's a lot of fighters out there. And as you know, and I know, the, the life of a fighter, it's hard. You know what I'm saying? And sadly, and this is just the way the world is, and it's like in any profession, really. Only a small fraction of people make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Only the, 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 the cream of the crop gets to make a living as a professional fighter. But then after you retire and you walk away, that can be a hard time. For me, yeah. I was always very worried about that. I was always concerned. I was trying to start businesses and things like that and get into the entertainment world, acting and all these kinds of things. But if someone was to ask you for advice, that was a fighter that was maybe thinking about retirement, what's some advice that you could give to them? Well, th there's there's a few fighters actually, actually that reach out to me. Uh, I can't say their name because it, it wouldn't be it would be nice, to, but, but there's a, a few very known fighter that reached out to me, talked to me about this. It's a, it's a, it's a question that came back to me very often. Mm. And, and I'm no different. In the beginning, I felt my life was a little bit empty. You know, I was glad to retire because I had too, ma too much stress, you know, and, and I, 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 I was glad when I retired. But after a few weeks, I was like, man, what am I going to do? You know, I, I prepared my retirement, but I, I, it, I felt like something was missing. So what I what I say to the the fighters that retire, I think they need to find themselves another challenge. You know, they need to be hungry for something else, because if you're satisfied in life, we're we're all fighters, we're all crazy competitors. If you're satisfied and you sit down, you're gonna get bored, and and that's when your your I think personally your your health will suffer and everything because your brain doesn't work. You know, you need to stay to stimulate your brain, your physique, stay in shape, st keep training. Because, you know, you, you carry your, your name, you know, you're, for example, you're Michael Bisping. Michael Bisping is fit, he's strong, he's, he's tall, he's big, he's not Jesus. fat, he's not out of shape. <laughs> he's, he's, you know what I mean? It, yeah. I think it's important you carry your brain for the rest of your life. So once, you, once physically you, you do that, you, you need to find yourself something that you, that you will enjoy. It could be fitness equipment, could be acting. I've seen you in mm. many movies and you, you were doing great. I, I really love Love uh, the way you were playing and in, in, in all these different movies. I think you're, you're very talented. Th there's different options for, for different people. You know, you have to find yourself a, a, a set of skill that, that is find, find what's, what, what first, what you would like to do. You know, not what people want you to do, but what you, what do you want to do? It's like, it's like when you go back as a kid, you know, first you want to, you want to find out what truly what you want to do, what makes you happy. Once you know that, there's a lot of people that, that will be very negative and say, oh, you can't do this, can't do that. You know, you, same thing when you, you wanted to be a, an MMA or a champion in MMA. You, those people, it's either you tell them to F out or you use that as a motivation to push yourself to get to your goal even more. And then you have to work hard, work, 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 work hard. And, and you know, and, and, and like when you climb climb to become champion and when you get champion if you get to your goal after your career you want to i think to always invest on yourself you know what i mean mm. if you're if you want to be i don't know a, a fitness trainer or, or or you need to invest to to, to invest on yourself get, get some knowledge you know follow some courses uh some classes that will give you more knowledge because if you don't do that, the competition will get get to you. You know what I mean? If you're a champion in MMA, if you if you don't improve, the competition will get to you. It's the same thing. And once you reach the top, is I think another thing that that is important is to give back, not to be nice. It's a little bit selfish to say it, but I give back only to the people that I care, to the cause that I care. So it motivates me to do more, to to 
to give me more it give me more motivation to do to 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 do better in what I do because I can give to these people. I don't give to everybody. I give to only the people I care and to the cause that I care. Mm. I think I think it's no. it's like a, a reboot, a, re, a, a restart of a, of a career, but in a different branch. Absolutely. I mean, you mentioned the acting thing there, and you know, obviously, that's a hard business, right? And I never thought oh, I'd talk. Terrible. About it. It's it, it's terrible. I'm sure I'm sure it's hard to get there. You know, it, it demands a lot of work. A lot of people, and I know because I've done some some a little bit. And I, man, some people believe they 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 are born a good actor. Man, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of a lot of work. You know what I mean? Like, like a fighter, you 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 were world champion. It takes you. A lot of sacrifice together. If you want to be Denzel Washington or, or Leonardo DiCaprio, man, it takes a lot, a lot of work. You know, you don't, you just don't wake up one day and I, I'm, I'm that good now. It doesn't happen like this, you know. But, but, but to your point a moment ago, I was going to say because, you know, I, I'm still pursuing the acting work because I enjoy it and all the rest of it. But my wife, but as you know, it, it takes a lot of time away, right? You, yeah. you go away for a long time. Last year I was in Bulgaria for 10 weeks and I've got children just like you have. And my wife was like, why do you do that? You don't need to do that. But it was to your point. I'm like, babe, I need to do something. I need to test myself. I've got to have that competitive urge taken care of. You know what I mean? So trying to, become an actor, trying to work in movies, trying to do all these things, which is very hard. That allows yeah. me to get my competitiveness out there. You know what I'm saying? It's working towards something and you get it and you're like, fucking let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Uh, same thing. I'm, uh, I just finished working on a an 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 mixed martial art, uh, fundamental instructional video. Nice. And I know there's a, it's a very competitive uh, industry. You know, there's a lot of great coaches out there, you know, like some are have way more experience than I do. But what I did to be different, I, I, I pay the production myself to have a better quality of production, you know, like and I, have, yeah. I was able to get many different camera angles, uh, you know, slow motion with voiceover to make it more interesting for the audience. Because I know that my English may be not as good as, you know, someone who's, who's born, raised in US or UK, for example. So I needed to offer uh, the client something different to get, mm. to, get me, to get me something different. So that's why I, I did it that way. I paid myself uh, $15,000, $20,000 to, for to produce my material. And then I, I made business with BJJ Fanatic and they, they really liked it. So it's doing very uh, well. So. BJJ Fanatic. So basically yeah. you sign up to BJJ Fanatics and maybe subscribe to a certain section and they can get access to your content. Yes, exactly. Because I, I, I think they're the best distri distributor, you know, in mm. terms of di distribution, they were great. So, so I think in, in, like in fighting, when you're in business, you need to keep your brain stable. Stimulate your brain. You need to do something mm. that is outside the box, to, that is different than your competitor. Yeah. Sometimes to be successful, and sometimes it's a big risk. You know, like I, I, I took a risk. I, I spent fifteen, twenty thousand dollars for to produce my own material. Maybe it wouldn't be successful, but it's doing very well, and I'm very happy. And, and nice. I'm, I'm gonna do more. I'm gonna do some more of this. And I think something that you could do yourself as well, Michael. I think you're, you're, uh, yeah, I, you're, I, I, you're I, a great I, fighter, I, and you have a lot of knowledge that could be teach. That, that uh, a lot of people would like to to know. Well, thank you very much. Talk to me about, obviously, I commentate. W w was that ever on the uh, on the agenda? Was that ever something you thought about doing? I did some in French, uh, but, yeah. but it's just I think that there's, because I live in Montreal and, 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 and it, it, the traveling, it's, a, it's an issue. Uh, oh, it's yeah. far. Uh, also, I feel there's, Guys that are way more, uh, way better than me, uh, way be way more qualified than me for that that job. You know, like like okay. I've seen you. You're doing very well. I mean, it takes time. You know, like I did some in French, and it takes time to to. You could be a good fighter, but doesn't mean you're a it's good hard. commentator. It, it it's yeah, it's yeah. a skill. It's something like acting, something like like anything else. It takes time to develop. 
especially for me because they used to subtitle me back in the day. <laughs> I used to be subtitled and now I'm bloody commentating. But you're right, it, it does. It's definitely a skill. For me, what I love about commentating, obviously it's a great sport and we love it and it changed our lives. Um, you know, I know a bit about your background. We've spoken at length before. You know, for me, I, it still keeps me involved with the sport because people always ask me, and I'm sure you get this question all the time, do you miss it? Do you ever think about making a comeback? And I can honestly say, no, I don't think about coming back. You know, I've been there. I've done it. I, I became the champ. I made some money and I've opened doors to other things. But commentating still allows me to be, be involved with the sport. I'm, I know you're completely done, but the people ask you that a lot. The people say, George, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? Uh, th th there's a lot of guys that want me to come back because they they they, they know I'm still in shape. I, I think if I really wanted to, I could maybe come back, but my heart is not there anymore. I'm not the same guy that I was when when we fought each other. You know, like when when we yeah. when I was competing, I was it was my number number one priority. I want to uh, you know I wanted to kill everyone. You know, I was at fire. You, know, you almost did kill fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, I always I always try to be nice, but deep down inside, you know, you you got the same thing inside. You know, yes, I know, I know. So, so when you lose that, I think it's hard to to get it back, and and it's possible that you get it back. But in th to be successful, I think it's it's important to have that that fire. When you a lot of guys they stay in the sport too long and they lost that fire. That's that, right. That That's thing right. that you know, like that that animal instinct, that 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 thing that makes you a great fighter. And and I think very often it's sad to say, but the fighter itself is the per is the last person to know when it's time to stop. You know. <sighs> It's so true. It's so true. I mean, I I don't expect you to say this, and this might be controversial. I, I'm not meaning it to be. But, you know, there's that old expression. You know, I think it was Marvin Hagler. This waking up in silk sheets. You know, you don't want to go and run in the morning. You know, when you look at someone like Conor McGregor that's had ridiculous success and was a two-weight division champion, apparently he's got now hundreds of millions, maybe close to a billion dollars. As you say, when you haven't got that fire, and I'm not necessarily talking about Conor McGregor, I'm not talking shit at all. But, you know, when, when you reach a certain level of success, Things do change. You know what I mean? You, you're not that same guy. You're not absolutely broke. You're yeah. not fighting for the same reasons. I think you're fighting for pride, you know. Uh, but what's your thoughts on that? I, I think you're, you're right. You, in order to improve, to stay in the game, to get ready for a fight, you need to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. And when your life is very comfortable, it's very hard to get out of your comfort zone. When it's been comfortable for a very long time, it's hard to... To, to get out of your comfort zone. That's why it's hard to become champion, but it's even harder to stay champion. Because when you get comfortable somewhere, it's harder to get outside of your comfort. And you need, in order to be, to maximize, to optimize your preparation for a fight, you need to get outside your, your comfort zone because when you're gonna fight, you're not gonna be in your comfort zone. So you need to recreate that environment when you're getting ready for the fight. Obviously, you were the welterweight champion of the world for a long time. Be with being champion comes a lot of pressure, right? You know, yeah, I mean, it's, that, uh, towards it's, the end, towards the end, was that driving you crazy? Uh, for me, the way I, I saw it, it, it was it's hard to explain. Is the fact that I'm I'm obsessive compulsive. I've never been diagnosed with it, but I, I you know I have the the behavior of an obsessive compulsive uh, disorder yeah. guy. Which make me, which which is good when you're in competitive things like like combat sport because I use that to get better. It drives me nuts. I'm I'm obsessive about my goal. I, I want, I'm I'm thinking about it all the time. I'm breathing it all the time. When I eat, I'm thinking of it all the time. So the the best way I can explain it for someone to try to understand is every as soon as I finish a fight, there's another guy who call me out. So I have no break. So there's another guy. Yeah and, yeah, and I'm thinking as soon as there's another guy or there's a the fight is announced or or there's another guy who is in the horizon that I may I may fight something happened in my brain and clack I'm right away I'm focused on that I'm, so your mental energy away, I cannot take away this image of me fight getting ready for the best I can to to solve that problem.
Yeah, because I think people don't realize, you know, when you're getting ready for a fight, you're training for someone, it's a world title fight, you got to do the press, you got to do all that type of thing, you got to go through the training camp itself, which in many ways is harder than the fight. Then you have the fight, then you finish, and then when you're the champion, straight away, boom. You don't, right have, away. You don't get to rest and go away and enjoy and go on vacation. That's interesting. I never thought of that. Straight away, boom, here's the next guy. Here's the next person you're going up against. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you're a contender, You fight a guy, then it takes a few weeks, a few months before you get another another name. You know what I mean? Because things yeah, can yeah. change, you know? But when the, you're the champion, <laughs> there's a guy waiting immediately after. So right away when you win, there's another guy. So you're like, shit. It, it feels, mentally, it feels like you have no break. It, it feels like, yeah. oh, God, you're stressed out again. You're on constantly on fighter's flight, sort of. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a survival mode that, I don't know, it's something very primal in, in your brain. It's hard to explain. And the best way I can explain it to people who, who are not in, into fighting is I felt with the accumulation, I felt like claustrophobic. I felt like I was mm -hmm. like, like I couldn't breathe and I needed to take a time off. Uh, that's why I, I, I left for uh, more than four yeah. years, you know? Yeah. Well, you did it. I mean, you're a true legend and people say you if not the greatest of all time, one of the greatest of all time. I know you're not going to say that about yourself because you're a very humble man, but who, who would you say, and I know it's a hypothetical thing and probably people are sick of hearing about it, but in your mind, if you were to pick the GOAT, who would that go to? Apart from yourself, because I know you'd never say that. <laughs> no, I'm not, you're not a dickhead. I would. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm the GOAT. I'm the fucking GOAT. Say that. So other than you, Who do you think deserves that? Because John Jones is the guy that everyone talks about. And I know you yep. don't want to talk bad, but then there's the picograms and all that stuff. But for me, John Jones is still in the running. I think he's still doing incredible things. But if you had to pick a name, who would you go with? Uh, for me, I think it's Royce Gracie. Because, because he, he, he did stuff that I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll see I'll ever see again. Like, like it, 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 he was fighting in, a, in an era that they, he didn't have any weight classes. Uh, the rules were much different. It was, it was very different. And mm -hmm. and back then it was a totally different thing. Like you were going into the cage, you thought maybe someone could die, you know. And I, and I, yeah. and I remember there, It's true. <laughs> there was a famous fight with Patrick Smith and uh, Morris, a nin, ninjutsu guy. The guy, Patrick Smith, was on top of his opponent throwing out when you see a flack of blood and the referee was like this, doing that. Like, it was bad. Like, like it was literally like, like someone could die out there. So it took, it took an incredible courage. So for me, Rice Gracie is the number one. And of course, if you put Rice Gracie in, in, in modern days against a champion, I don't think he would maybe do so well. So sure. I think the real GOAT, the real, real GOAT is not even born yet because... We can talk as much as we want, but I truly believe that the performances tend to get better over time. And, and, and it, it has nothing to do with the persons, because I don't think the athletes are better now than they were before. I, I don't think it has to do with the person. I think it has to do with knowledge and technology. I think yep, because, yep, because I we have more knowledge and more technology. I remember, Michael... When I first started to, to train for mixed martial art competition, I, I wanted to learn Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I needed to go in New York to learn a, a, an armbar, a jiu-jitsu I need to, to, to drive or to, to be present as a person in the class to learn an armbar. Now I can take my cell phone, go on YouTube and learn the technique in two crazy. seconds. It, it, crazy. It, so, so it has... So, so the guys nowadays are already start with a, with a, with a head start because of it. Mm. And it will be the same in the future. It's the same thing. So, so Royce Gracie, Mark Coleman, Don Fry, Dan Severn, all these guys, for me, they were the, the yeah. true warrior, you know? And we, we, we tend to forget about these guys, but they, they all paved the ways for us to, to, to have yep. a better life. One, 100%, George. It's funny what you mentioned there, you know, because I remember, I think it was 2002, something like that. And we were trying to figure out how to escape a triangle. Right. And I remember <laughs> my coaches and I we were sitting around and we were like brainstorming and like, try this, do that. I saw this technique here. Or I've heard that this works. And we're trying different things. As you say, all you got to do now is go to YouTube and you can yeah. see 20 ways. It's crazy. Yeah, because we're in touch with, with the world. 
So if someone has an idea, is is in Japan, we can hear about it, you know. And, and yeah. it's a technology that I we didn't have back then. So when I was young, I didn't have that technology, this, that privilege to learn, and it makes the the, the learning curves much faster. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Oh. So it, it, and also like I I think even the same is the same thing in science. I think it's um. It's Einstein has I, 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 I said it best. He said, if, if I've seen further, it's because, because I'm standing on shoulders of giants. It's the same thing in sport. Same thing yeah. in basketball, in hockey, baseball, and everything. Football, same thing. Well, well, the level always increases. I mean, as human beings learn more about it, as the training techniques get better, as the resources get better, better coaches, better athletes, all the rest of it. Um, MMA Yeah, yeah but, but, but I, I am not sure... Let me ask you this. Go ahead. I don't think we get better as human beings. I think we get better because of the technology. I think our yes. ego make us think that we're better than the previous, the previous, the, our, our predecessors. But I think if you would take, for example, the champion of penetration in ancient Greek and make it make him compete against our champion of modern day, maybe they would win. And I'm going to tell you why, Michael, because they did it for more than 800 years. Would mm -hmm. you, and, and after that, the sport, the sport was dead. We didn't Could hear about imagine? it until quite recently. And, and we've imagine been doing evolution? MMA for, for like 30 years. It's been like maybe 30 years. 30 like years. Imagine the, how much it would involve in 800 yeah. years. It used to be the most popular sport. It was the number one sport. They used to stop war during the Olympic game to make their best athlete compete. So sometimes I'm really curious. Of course, the rules were different. They, were, they used to fight na naked and everything. But I'm really curious if they would have better fighters than us. And I, and I think if, 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 I, 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 if I have to be objective about that, if, I, if someone asks me the question, I think it's, the answer is yes. Well, 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 I mean, that's a good point. I mean, the hu human beings are always getting bigger, faster, stronger. That's why records always get beaten, right? The 100-meter dash, it's always getting broken every year. So maybe today's athletes would be better. But as you say, 800 years of evolution. I mean, right now, I mean, it's only a few years ago, calf kicks started getting used as a thing. And you see the games changing all the time. So 800 years of that, and they were doing it at a much, you know, they didn't have referees, they didn't have judges, they didn't have people going, no, downward elbows. You know what I mean? The consequences were much higher. So well, I mean, you, you, if, you, if you wanted to, uh, to give up, you had to point the sky. That's how you give up. And uh, the, the rules were, were much different. And, and, and one thing I, I remember I saw, um, they were uh, making, a, you know, Jesse Owen, the, the sprinter, when he, he sprint in Berlin, uh, yeah. before the Second World War, he, he had the world, the world record of the time. He was sprinting in a different surface, no starting block, no, uh, no, uh, yeah. you know, the, the shoes, the equipment sure, were yeah. much no, different. No shoes or no yes. technology in the shoes. And, we, we, and, and I saw a, a documentary on, on the plane the other day. They made André de Grasse, who I, I think he finished uh, bro, uh, bronze medal, uh, the... Not the, not the last Olympic game or, or the other one before. And they made him sprint in the same condition that Jesse Owen would, had, had sprinted okay. before. And Jesse Owen won the race. Jesse no Owen way. did win the race. However, Jesse Owen, when he made the world record at the time, he was in his peak. Adrien de Grasse was not in his peak, you know, because in sprinting, yeah. you have to peak. It's like a fight. You know, when you get close to a competition, you're, you're in shape. So maybe mm. that has a lot to do with the result. But it's just to say that proves that technology has a lot to do with, uh, you know, the, the technology, now the knowledge, the drugs, you know, a lot of athletes use yeah. drugs. So it has a huge impact on the, the performances. Do you follow modern day mixed martial arts? Are you still a fan? Do you still watch a lot of the pay-per-views and the fights? I, I do. Uh, um, I, I love, you know, I don't watch every fight because there's simply too many. Uh, lot, but I, yeah. I, I, I watch the, 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 the fighters that I like to watch. You know, I, I mm. think there, there's some of them that are very interesting to watch. So who are some of the people that George St. Pierre has to see? Oh, I love uh, all the champion, of course. Uh, Wokanowski, uh, who just fought. It was amazing. Oh, I missed his fight because I was on the plane, but I watched it after. It was just incredible. He really uh, He's one of the greatest of all time. Uh, I like to watch uh, Adesanya. Uh, I, I like, you know, I, I like to watch uh, a, lo a lot of the guys. John Jones is one, and Ganu. 
Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, all the champion. I like to watch the best guys because I, when I watch them fight, I, I, I learn something. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, talk to me about the welterweight division. Right now, it's Leon Edwards. He's the champion of the world. I mean, he knocked out Kamara Usman and then he beat him in the rubber match. I mean, that was that was a clear victory. Um, you know, what do you think about the welterweight division right now? What do you think about the champ? Man, I think he's uh, he's on fire right now and uh, the sky is the limit for him. I'm excited to see uh, who he's going to go up against. I think, is, is it uh, Cole Victim? Colby, yeah. Colby, Cole Victim, yeah. It would, be, it would be interesting. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah his style well, well, makes fight, you know, well. so so I, I can't wait, you know, like I, I, I'm a little bit biased because I, I met uh, Edwards, he's, he's, he was very nice to me, we had a, 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 a good time together when we were in, um, in uh, Manchester. Manchester, so uh, I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, no, he's a great guy. He really is. Uh, as you say, you mentioned Colby Covington there, Colby's a guy, he will make that fight very interesting because he talks a lot of crap. <laughs> okay, I think a lot of people seeing us talking like this might be like, wow, I, I thought they didn't like each other, you know, and uh, I talked a lot of crap. Of course I did. But, you know, I knew, I mean, listen, I, I was under no illusions. You were the pay-per-view star. You know what I mean? You were the big, big name. And I was like, okay, this is going to be the biggest payday of my life. I'm going to make sure I try and generate every penny I can out of it. So I sold my soul <laughs> to the devil. I was talking shit. I was embarrassing myself. You know what I mean? Um, but you're going up against Nick Diaz in a grappling match. Do you think there'll be any shit talk or do you think it's like that's all water under the bridge? I don't think it will be any shit talk. Yeah. It's not it's not like mixed martial arts, it's different. Yeah. I think it's a different different sport. I mean, my, I, I mean I can I can't speak for him. And it's yeah. not sure it's not you know it's not sure it's Nick Diaz. I don't know. I mean that's the name sure, they gave sure. me. And we're going to see. They said that he was interesting. I don't know. We'll see what's going to happen. Bro, if Nick Diaz doesn't want to do it, I'll, 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 I'll grapple you, George. <laughs> <laughs> I, I owe you one. <laughs> uh, I, 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 a lot of guys want to grapple me. I see. I saw some tweet and some um, Instagram posts. Like, everybody, you know, they, it's, it, it, all, it, it all has to do with money. Everybody wants to be the... It's like Conor McGregor, for example. Everybody want to fight Conor McGregor. It's the money fights, you know? That's, yeah, yeah. that's um, what people yeah. care ab about, you know? It's the freaking money. <laughs> hey, well, money comes in handy. Uh, right, so let's go through here. I'm looking at Twitter right now, and I'm going to see if there's any good questions. Um, how did it feel to destroy Bisping? Yeah, ignore that one, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to an up and coming fighter? An, ad an advice I would say, well, first, I you might not like my answer, but I've seen a lot of kids, a lot of parents coming with their kids and they're, they're always telling me, hey, George, this is the, the future world champion. And I, I go on my knees and I talk to the kids. I, I ask him, I say, how, how, how are you doing it at school? And it, everybody's mm. surprised. And I tell him, I say, you know what's the most important important thing for you right now? It's to be educated. Educate yourself, you know? Thing. Do yeah. sport, you know? Like, make sure that you do it. If you like it, it's, it's a good self-defense. But don't put all your eggs in the same basket because if you get hurt or if, let's say, you get hit by a car, everything goes away. And, and if if you only focus on, on fighting and then by the age of 30, you realize that you just can't make it. You have, if you have no background at, in school, you have nothing that you can fall back into. Yeah. So I, I tell you, it's it it's very the odds are against you if you plan on being a Michael Bisping or a George St. Pierre. It, it's the odds are against you. You can't make it. It's it take that idea outside of your of your uh, of your head, mm. but. Yeah, stay at school, educate yourself, keep training hard. And down the line, if you see that an opportunity comes and you make it, you make it, but you'll have an education as a bag, as, as an assurance if something goes bad, you know? You have a second option if, if something d doesn't go your, your first choice, you know? So that's what I say to the kid. My, my first advice would say stay at school and educate yourself first. And then once you got that covered, now go for it. Yeah, no, and that's smart advice because I speak to a lot of young men that are struggling, you know what I mean, and they're lost in life and they don't know what to do and they've got no direction. And some of them say they want to fight and all the rest of it. But I think what you just said there is kind of advice for anyone. 
you know, not even just a fighter, you know, but what would you say to any young men out there that kind of feel lost, that have no direction, that they don't know what to do with themselves? I mean, have you got any advice you could give them? Yeah, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. That That's, you know, be, except being a fighter, you know, I, at one point, yeah. even I, I tried to become a fireman. You know what I mean? I, I, I've tried everything, you know, I, I, I I I, uh, I I I had different diploma di diplomas in different things, you know. Like I, I can install ceramic on the floor, you know. And people don't know I graduated yeah, yeah, yeah. that too. I wanted to be a fireman, but they they wrote me a letter saying, "You we can take you in the school in the fireman school, but you don't." Um, there are certain characters that that you 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 don't. You don't that are required and add something in my in my back like a vertebrae that is offline. So I see. therefore, they they would I wouldn't be the first pick if if they have the choice of choosing me and then someone else. They they advise me to not of this. So I was like thinking I was like oh I can be an MMA fighter but not a fireman. Then doesn't that doesn't make sense? You know what I mean? But yeah. but what I say is it it is normal when you're young and you don't know what to do. It is normal because when you're 20, 20 years old, you're not the same person that when you were 15. And when you're 25, you're not going to be the, you're not the same that when you were 20 and 30, same thing. I think that when you're about 30, 30, it starts to stabilize a little bit. There's less changes. You know, it, it's all different. Every, every individuals are different, but that's what I feel. So give yourself mm. some time. But in the meantime, it's hard. It's a grind. Like, keep yourself, educate yourself. Like, you know, like, find yourself mm. some hobbies. And, and I know it sucks sometimes if you don't know what you really want to do. Uh, if you want to be a fighter, make sure you stay uh, in shape. You know, educate yourself. But always have yourself, uh, like, an assurance that if something doesn't go your way, at least you have something that you can fall back into to make some money. That, that's my main thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's I mean that's amazing because I think you know you look at that when, when one door closes, it's not the end of the world. That's just creating other opportunities. Like yourself, I I tried to join the army and the army wouldn't take me because I had a couple of scraps in bars and they were like, oh, you've you've got a criminal record and they wouldn't take me I, and I cried. I did. I, I was in tears on the phone. I was crying my eyes out. I thought, because I was trying to get my life together. I had no direction when I was younger. I was an idiot. I was drinking. I was partying. I was getting up to no good and getting arrested for just bar fights. I was never a criminal. I was just a young idiot. And I thought, right, I'm going to join the army. I'm going to get my shit together. And he said, no. And I cried my eyes out on the phone. I thought, it's over. I can't even join the army, you know? And then it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah. And then, you know, Michael, I'm sure same for you. You can, you can talk about it. Like, like, do you, do you know how many guys, like, you, I know there's a lot of young guys that are watching this. Do you know how many guys I see in the gym who dream to become a fighter? Who dream to become a fighter? Yep. But I know, like, like you need, we're not born, we're not all born with the same set of card. You know what I mean? There, there's a minimum of, of, that you need to have in order to, 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 to get there. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And, and, and Outside of that, the star need to be aligned. You need to work hard. There's a lot of things. You know what I mean? The odds are really the odds of success are very, very, very small. And there's a lot of guys I see in the gym. I feel sorry for them. I like to train because the gym is the place that I can release. I can I can release my anger. It's very therapeutic for me to go train. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel good. It helps me be, to be a better person. But it's, it's also very sad because I see a lot of guys there that sometimes they ask me for advice. They say, hey, George, what do you think I should do? And it, they ask me training advice, but the real advice that I would give them, I would say, hey, uh, you know, my friend, I, uh, you know, you're 30, 30 years old. You, you lost uh, three fights in a row. You know, you're still in the minor league. I think you should get your, your ship together and find a real job, you know, because now you're yeah. just a punching bag for the up and, up and comer. You know what I mean? It's not, and, and it's there's the a lot truth, more though. of these guys than guys like Michael Bisping or Jean Saint Pierre. That you only hear about the one that makes it. Yep. So yep. that's why people dream about this. But the odds, that's not the, the the reality. The odds are really, really, really small. You know, and especially now because mixed martial arts is more popular than ever. Everybody wants to be a fighter these days. So yeah, great advice, George. Same thing in the life. same thing in football. Same thing in hockey. Same thing well, in well, same well, thing well, in everything. My my daughter wants to be an actress. 
So, so many people want to be an actress. Same thing, right? senior actress, so, anything. Yeah, so she's she's going to acting class and all the rest of it. But I'm saying, Ellie, you have to do something else. She's she's changing college next year. She wants to do something in performing arts. But I'm like, sweetheart, of course you got a dream, and that's amazing to have a dream. And I think it's impa- I think it's important for any young men or women to have a dream and have a goal and dream big. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, but also, I'm like, nah. some people say don't have a plan B. Because that's giving yourself an insurance policy. But I'm like, Ellie, you got to train in something else as well. Because if you, everybody wants to be a bloody movie star. You know what I mean? And the chances yeah. of that happening are probably less <laughs> than becoming George St. Pierre. And, and the sad thing about the, this industry, and, and it, it's not like fighting. Fighting, if you're the best, you're going to make it, you know, because you beat the guy. Yeah. And they have no choice. And, unless you do something crazy outside that, that destroy your reputation. But in acting... You could be very good, but they're going to choose the other guy because uh, connection or anything. Yeah, or connection. Especially if, you know what I mean? It's sad to say, but I've seen a lot of this. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Well, listen, we'll, leave you, we'll let you go there, George. George St. Pierre is coming back to the Fight Pass Invitational TBD sometime in December. I'll be training with you. You come down. My, Michael Bisping is coming back too, by the way. Yeah, you know, yeah, you heard yeah. of it? Let's go. Let's <laughs> fucking go. <laughs> I'm in. George, you are the absolute man. I'm proud to call you a friend these days. And one of my proudest moments was sharing the Oxygen with you that time. So thank you for that. Thank you for the memories. And thank you for your time today. One of my funnest, one of my best moments was to share the share a few drinks with you in Manchester last time. <laughs> it, it was a legendary time. Tell uh, Bruno I say hi. And, yes, sir. Uh, have a great weekend. And I'll talk to you soon. All the best, George. You're the Bye, man. Bye, take care. Cheers. Much love. Take care, brother. There it is. Later, George. Thank you.